Welcome. In front of me is a Sony Xperia 5 Mark III and today I'll show you a couple of tweaks and tricks you can do on this phone. So number one, we're going to begin with the high refresh rate, which can be found under settings, more precisely display. Right here, right at the top, you can find it. So high refresh rate. By default, for some reason, it's turned off. So let's change that and turn it on. Now, unfortunately for this device, it has no like smart high refresh rate or something like that, where it basically tries to you know save a little bit of battery by dropping to for instance 60 or below when it doesn't need to use 120 as an example like right freaking now where we're literally looking at a still image which is being displayed for some odd reason at 120 hertz wasting the battery it's a still image nothing is moving so it's a little bit of a shame but other than that whenever you're actually scrolling up and down uh, this does make everything smoother and just the phone feels much snappier because of it so videos gaming will look way better than it normally does but like i said your battery life might suffer a little bit because of this now moving on to the next one which is also under the display it is the image quality and as you can see we have a couple different ways we can go with we have the standard mode we have color mode and we have also autocorrect mode which is actually enabled and for some reason also video image uh, enhancer is also enabled now this option uh, basically tries to add a little bit more fidelity to the image uh, by doing some kind of like processing in the background so if you don't like how images are, are actually looking vi videos more precisely you might want to disable this but i'll just fiddle around with it on and off to see uh, so you can find out which one you prefer more now going to these two options we have color uh, gamma and contrast we have the standard mode which i believe might be a little bit more saturated and then we have the uh, creator mode which apparently is what srgb correct or that's at least what it usually should be provides a faithful representation of blah 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 um developing processing compatible with uh, tp2020 color gamut and so yeah, it should be fairly color accurate, though it doesn't really specify to which one, I think. Uh, the only thing it is, is the TB2020, which honestly, I ha actually have no idea what that is. So yeah, uh, but general consensus should be more accurate to faithful color uh, reproduction. As you can see when enabled, it does make the screen look a little bit more yellowish uh, than the, the default one. So. I know not everybody will like this, uh, I personally do. It makes the device a little bit less saturated and uh, apparently more more faithful color reproduction, so I guess I'll take that. Now, next thing that I wanted to show you would be the uh, dark theme. Now, it's nothing really special, it just allows you to enable the dark mode on this device. Now, usually we have a toggle in the notification panel, but looks like it's disabled by default or not even on here. Oh, no, there it is. So if you want to have a quick toggle, you can just drag it over and you can now toggle between it at your will. You can also hold it and this should take us to the uh, settings of it where you will be able to set it up as a schedule if that is something that you want. So as an example, during the daytime you would have light mode and during the nighttime it would switch to dark mode, giving you fairly well, good kind of option for best of both worlds. So. Yeah. Now, moving on to the next option, it's going to be something that probably not very many people uh, realize that phones have, uh, at least the newer ones and uh, the ones that aren't Huawei like me, uh, unfortunately. So this is the auto rotate. Now, any device that is, I believe, like running Android 9, uh, not 9, uh, 10 has this, unless you're using Huawei like me. And basically what it allows you to do is if you're locked to a specific uh, orientation, as you can see, auto rotate is off. Uh, when you try to rotate, it does nothing, right? Because auto rotate is off. Same goes for browser. Let me just kind of go fiddle around. You can see it. Flip it over. Nothing happens. It doesn't actually flip over. But what appears is this tiny little icon right here. And it just disappeared. Now it's visible for 
couple of seconds so you can top on it. And as you can see, it will flip the content right now. And if I flip it back, it won't go back to this to the portrait mode. So if you want to make it go back, you would again press on that icon, though it disappears like I mentioned after a couple of seconds. There we go. And as you can see, it goes back to normal. And the auto rotate is off. So personally, I really like this uh, because as an example, I when I'm laying in bed, as probably most of us are browsing YouTube and stuff like that uh, during night, uh, when you just kind of like, you know, use this device in this kind of orientation, uh, everything goes to flip itself. And sometimes it's, it's good, sometimes it's not. Now, I don't really like the auto rotate option uh, just on its own. It's most of the time not useful. It's more of a annoyance because it flips the screen when I don't want it to. So this tiny little button is one of the best things accessible on Android 10 and onwards. Unless you're using Huawei like me, then you're kind of screwed. Uh, I am really salty about that because uh, like I'm saying, Huawei is running on Android 10 and they decided to deliberately remove this option. But for this specific device, it's amazing. Now, anyway, moving on to the last option, which again is not enabled by default and I would prefer it to be, is the gesture navigation. So as you can see, we have the triple button navigation at the bottom and it is quite outdated at this point. So I do prefer to use gestures. So let's enable them by going into the settings all the way down to system, gestures, and system navigation, where you can find gesture navigation. It substitutes it for this bar at the bottom, which you can swipe up. As you can see, additionally, uh, the search bar and everything on the screen shifted a little bit down because it doesn't need to accommodate those buttons that were here before. So the way you navigate through this is you swipe up to go home, swipe up and hold to go to recent and swipe up, swipe from sides to go back. Now this, there we go. I do have a, uh, as you can see, screen protector, which makes this uh, a little bit harder. This is specifically a screen protector that isn't for this device for uh, reasons that are unknown to me. So my finger is catching on the edge right here. That's why it's kind of harder to get the back gesture. But as you can see, it works just fine if you can actually get it. I, I don't think I can because the like the screen protector doesn't even cover the entire screen so it doesn't work here but from the other side as you can see it does normally it will work flawlessly from either side the back gesture so don't worry about that one but anyway this would conclude all the tweaks and tricks that i wanted to share and if you found this video helpful don't forget to hit like subscribe and thanks for watching